On the 18th of May 1980, there was a major volcanic eruption in the northwest of the USA when Mount St. Helens blew up. In a programme first broadcast two years ago, Lucy Williamson spoke to Dorothy Stoffel, who witnessed the eruption close up. It's Sunday morning, May the 18th, 1980. A beautiful day. And in America's northwestern state of Washington, geologist Dorothy Stoffel is circling above the volcano of Mount St. Helens in a small Cessna plane. We were in the airspace for about 45 minutes and just absolutely in awe of what we saw. The mountain, which had been a beautiful snow and ice-covered peak that had been perfectly symmetrical, was now covered in ash. But I was thinking to myself, it was such a serene Sunday morning that the mountain had become dormant, and I I felt a sense of disappointment. With her in the plane was her husband, Keith, also a geologist. The plane trip had been a birthday present to Dorothy. Mount St Helens had been smoking and throwing out ash for two months, the first signs of eruption in more than a century. This was a chance for the two geologists to see the volcano up close. What was striking for us, the mountain had bulged on the north side. Some folks said it looked like the pregnant volcano. The north side of the volcano had swollen from the pressure that was building below, and it was 300 vertical feet from its original profile. We decided to make a pass over the crater. I felt a bit anxious about it, but then I sort of reassured myself that nothing could possibly happen. At that point, there was a tremendous crater that had developed from the early eruptive activity at the summit of the volcano. The crater was about uh, 1,000 to 1,200 feet deep. Uh, It was an enormous feature. And as we flew over it, the first two times, I was in awe of seeing such an enormous opening at the top of the volcano, but yet No indication at all that anything was about to happen. At that point, I was just feeling very much at peace, uh, that it was a beautiful Sunday morning. And I looked down and I saw a red pickup truck winding its way along the roadway there. So we decided that we would make one more pass over the crater and then head back to Yakima. So we are climbing in altitude, and we're, we're circling the mountain from the south. And as we came around from the southwest, I thought I saw more steam. Under the tranquil surface of Mount St. Helens, pressure was building. But unconcerned by the growing clouds of steam pouring out of the crater, Keith and the pilot, Bruce, voted to fly on. So we were 500 feet directly above this enormous crater. All of a sudden, we saw the glacier that was perched on the south crater wall, the ice falling into the crater. And that was a pretty dramatic sight, we thought. And I got excited, and I snapped a couple of of slides. And I took pictures of the ice fall into the crater. Just as I snapped the second picture, this enormous fracture opened up that was several miles in length. It was though the volcano were being sliced in half. And what was totally bizarre is that the whole north half of the mountain began to vibrate and churn. And just as quickly as we recognized what was happening, the whole north half of the volcano beneath our feet began to fall away. It was such a dramatic sight for us, but I immediately thought to myself, something this huge for a whole mountain to fall apart like this means this is the big eruption, and here we are, 500 feet above. The pilot, uh, not really recognizing the significance of where we were and what was happening, calmly said, take some pictures. So he tipped the wing of the plane so we could look down. I was not capable of taking pictures at that point, but Keith did. 
And what we captured is the whole north half of the mountain falling away. And as it fell away, steam became pouring out of where the mountain had detached. And what you see in our photos is the initial blast coming right up beneath our feet. We had just cleared the crater when the explosion was out our rear view windows. The devastation on the mountainside was incredible. Trees knocked down, everything covered with ash. About 2,000 people had to be evacuated. Bruce then put the plane into a nosedive. So imagine to gain speed to try to outrun the blast cloud. Because the initial blast came out the north side and it was a lateral blast, a horizontal blast. And so the blast was overtaking us. And I can remember sitting in the front of the airplane and seeing the ground coming up toward my face, so to speak, and thinking, well, that's probably just a better way to go than facing what is behind us. The blast cloud chasing them was blown out of the mountain at a minimum speed of 300 miles per hour. Its temperature was around 600 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt lead. Inside the tiny aeroplane, Dorothy sat terrified in the front seat, her husband grimly silent behind her. Then the whole cloud lifted. It actually looked like a mushroom cloud as it was developing. As it lifted, we could see tremendous lightning. There was so much lightning and we were close enough, the whole interior of the volcano was illuminated. What did it look like? It was just breathtaking. It just was an incredible sight. You see the very dark material that is erupting. And in that dark material, we could see big blocks of mountain that were being blown apart. Combined with that, you see this very neutral colored ash. And that was the magma exploding. What did it sound like? To me, that was one of the most fascinating things. I remember at the time, all of a sudden, thinking to myself, I'm not hearing anything. There is this incredible event happening, and I'm not hearing anything. As it turns out, nobody within 30 miles of the mountain heard the eruption. And they think because everything was moving at such supersonic speeds close in. And yet, the blast was heard 1,400 miles away up in British Columbia, Canada. Actually, they picked up the shock wave from the explosion in New York uh, that afternoon on uh, seismographs. The bizarreness of watching this incredible explosion... And it was like a silent film before my eyes. 57 people were killed in the silence of that eruption on Sunday morning. Remarkably, all the nearby population centres were spared. Nowadays, the activity at Mount St Helens is monitored by 24-hour cameras, beaming out pictures of its snow-capped winter peaks and, on clear nights, the hot lava dome glowing deep inside its giant crater.